Hello and welcome to our Dating Smoothing Tutorial series. In our previous video, we demonstrated how to generate a smooth version of a time series using the Brown Simple Exponential Smoothing Function, or the SESMTH. We also showed how to manually find the optimal value for the smoothing factor alpha. You may click on the annotation to watch that video again, or click the link in the description box below. As a quick review, we used Excel data tables to compute the sum of squared errors, or the SSE, between the original series and the smooth version for different alpha values. We pick the value that gives us the smallest SSE, which is a measure of fitness. In this tutorial, we will generate a smooth version of the same data set that we used before. But this time, we will let NumXL find the optimal value of the smoothing factor on its own. Like in our previous video, we will use the monthly sales time series of a hypothetical company X. Let's start. Select the D4 cell, and in the formula toolbar, type SESMTH. Now, click on the effects button on the left of the formula bar to invoke the dialog box. In the input time series field designated as X, type or select the cells range. Lock the beginning cell. Set the chronological order of data to 1, which is the ascending order. You can leave the alpha field empty or set an initial value for the optimizer to use. We'll leave it blank for now. Set the optimize field to true. This instructs NOMIC cell to find the optimal value for alpha. Lastly, set the T field, or the forecast horizon, to A4. Click OK. Now, let's copy the formula to the rows below it. Plot the smooth time series next to the original data. Then let's compute the sum of squared errors, or the SSE, to gauge the goodness of fit. Select the cell in G3. And in the formula bar, type SSE and click on the effects button to bring up the dialog box. For X, select the original time series. And for Y, select the cells range of the smooth time series. Now click OK. And there you go. The new SSE is lower than the one we calculated using the prior method. This is because the NAMIC cell optimizer computed a new value for alpha for each data point, whereas before we applied the same value to all data points. We also did not restrict alpha to a finite set of values. So the NAMIC cell solver had a higher level of freedom to find a better solution. That is it for now. Thank you for watching. 